Back in 2020, we learned about Tesla's Pilot 4680 manufacturing facility in Fremont, California, and that facility was supposed to have an installed capacity of around 10 gigawatt hours of batteries being produced per year. However, based on information that was recently shared with me, apparently the actual 4680 production rates coming out of this factory are actually quite a bit lower than that 10 gigawatt hours per year number. So let's dive into some of this new information that was shared with me about Tesla's 4680 manufacturing progress, including production numbers that were shared with me and also yield rates. And then I want to explain a few specific issues that Tesla is dealing with with their 4680 manufacturing. So without further ado, let's dive in. I'm John and welcome to Cleaner Watt. At the beginning of this video, I wanna be really clear. The information that I'm going to share in this video comes from more than one source, which will remain nameless. And while the information that was shared with me appears to be credible, I have not been able to personally verify all the information that I'm going to share. This video is not meant to be financial or investing advice. And as always, please use your own discretion with all the information I'm going to share and verify everything for yourself before you take any actions based on this information. When it comes to manufacturing a brand new product, say like the 4680 battery in this case, um, during the production ramp phase, there is often a big difference between the installed annual capacity that is initially talked about and the actual production rate that is being achieved at a given moment. Tesla's 4680 Pilot Manufacturing Facility in Fremont, California is no different in this regard because back in September of 2020 at Tesla's Battery Day event, Drew Baglino mentioned that their Cato Road Pilot Facility in Fremont was a 10 gigawatt hour production facility and Elon Musk added that, quote, it will take about a year to reach the 10 gigawatt hour capacity. Since we are now almost two years after the Battery Day event, I have been assuming that Tesla's production rate at their Fremont pilot facility was somewhere near this 10 gigawatt hours per year number. However, based on information that was recently shared with me, apparently the actual production rates from this Fremont pilot facility are somewhere around 20% of the 10 gigawatt hour per year goal. I was told that Tesla operates this pilot facility um, 24 hours a day in two separate shifts and that they're averaging somewhere around 60,000 individual 4680 batteries being produced per day. I was also told that Tesla has been at this same rate for around two months or so. Now, when it comes to how 60,000 battery cells being produced per day um, translates into an actual annualized production rate, that exact number depends on the amount of energy in watt hours that is stored in each battery cell. Thankfully, there is a bit of information that has been shared by various sources um, that can give us a pretty good estimate at the watt hours of energy that are in each one of these 4680 battery cells. For this chart, I have gathered 4680 cell energy estimates from three separate sources and based on some basic math and assuming that my sources are correct about this production rate and also that these energy capacity estimates are correct. At this current rate, this would indicate an annualized rate of somewhere around two gigawatt hours per year, which is only around 20% of the 10 gigawatt hour per year capacity number that was mentioned by Drew and Elon almost two years ago at Battery Day. When it comes to some of the explanations why Tesla's 4680 production ramp isn't going as quickly as they had hoped, I recently published a video where I shared several of the specific 4680 production issues that Tesla is reportedly encountering according to my sources. I definitely recommend that you watch that full video and I will link to it in the video description below. Um, but in summary, the three specific issues I discussed were the clumping and subsequent clogging issues of the electrode powder during the dry battery electrode manufacturing process. I also discussed an issue with improperly folded battery flags and also an issue with jelly roll telescoping. As I pointed out in that video, the good news is that Tesla has made great progress towards reducing many of these issues, but they do still exist. However, these three issues are likely a very small part of the explanation for the lower production rate, which I will discuss later on in the video. Now, it's one thing to know how many battery cells are being produced per day, but it's a whole other thing to know the actual yield rates of good cells versus bad cells. When it comes to yield rates, as a follow-up to that past video, I was recently told that in an average day of 4680 battery cell production at Tesla's pilot facility in Fremont, California, Tesla has to scrap, or as I assume, recycle, between 1,000 to 2,000 defective cells. 
When it comes to some of the reasons why these 4680 battery cells are being rejected, I was told that currently the most common issue that results in a battery cell being rejected is the issue with improperly folded electrode flags, which I discussed in that past video, um, followed by telescoping issues that we also discussed, and then general high pot test failures in that order. So if you do some basic math, this implies an initial yield rate of somewhere around 97 to 98%, which if my source is correct, this actually seems quite good, especially at this stage of the process and uh, with a brand new technology. However, upon further review, I think it's really important to note that the initial production yield rates are actually only a very small part of the picture because not all of the good cells are equal and not all of these cells will actually make their way into a vehicle. According to an article from evreporter.com, which I will link to in the video description, in general, when battery cells come off of a production line, they are separated into various grades of cells, all based on a series of performance metrics. It is important to note that the different grades of cells still function fine. Once again, these are cells that, that passed tests and are deemed to be usable cells. However, each grade has slight variations in performance characteristics. Thus, the lower B and C grade cells are usually allocated to less performance intensive applications and generally not used in electric vehicles. When it comes to some of the averages of how many battery cells actually make this A grade cut, once again, this evreporter.com article implies that in general, around 90% or more of the battery cells being produced by a battery manufacturer will be labeled as an A grade battery cell, and the rest of the good cells, 10% or less, will fall into the B and C categories. So while those initial yield rates that I talked about, that 97%, 98%, while those are very promising and actually very encouraging and gives me a lot of confidence in Tesla's abilities to mass manufacture these cells in the future, once again, that's only a small part of the picture. And we really need to know um, how many of these battery cells that Tesla is producing are able to be called A-grade cells and uh, can actually be used in electric vehicles. This is definitely something I'm going to try to find out and hopefully I'll have an update for you in the future. Now, moving beyond yield rates, um, earlier on in the video, I mentioned that the three issues that we talked about in that past video are likely only a very small part of the reasons why Tesla's production rates at this pilot facility are lower than expected. If those yield percentages are correct, I believe that this is corroborated um, because yes, these issues still exist, these three issues that we talked about, but if Tesla is having a 97 to 98% initial yield rate, then maybe those issues aren't really causing a lot of problems. But there are a few other issues that were recently shared with me, and this could further explain why Tesla's production at this facility is lower than expected. I was told that Tesla is currently having issues with the escalator that transports the electro jelly rolls from the first floor to the second floor at this pilot facility for the next step of the battery manufacturing process. Apparently this jelly roll escalator is a pretty complicated device and it's experiencing um, several maintenance issues. Unfortunately, however, the cell assembly issues go beyond just that escalator issue because I was also told that Tesla is experiencing issues with the machine that inserts the jelly rolls into the battery cans. As a reminder, when you manufacture battery cells using a high speed continuous motion production line as Tesla described at battery day, any problem or bottleneck in one step of the process will dictate the production capacity of the entire line. Every process is directly linked. And in this case, the second floor jelly roll insertion processes can be stopped by escalator problems on the first floor, which keep the jelly rolls from being transported to the second floor. Or on the flip side, when the machine that inserts the jelly rolls into the battery cans um, has a malfunction, that can lead to jelly rolls from the first floor having nowhere to go, and thus a bottleneck is created and other processes have to stop. Now those are two technical reasons for the lower than expected 4680 production rates, but there's also a logistical reason as well. Remember that this is a pilot facility that is being used to test and improve new processes, methods, and machines. This means that the end goal from this factory is not the same as it would be for say, Giga Texas battery production. While I'm sure that Tesla would like to produce more 4680 batteries from this facility than they currently are, I believe that a little bit less production is acceptable as they test out new processes and various new 4680 iterations. 
When it comes to one explanation of this being a pilot facility and how that slows down production rates, I was told that almost every day Tesla will stop the main 4680 production and switch over to special engineering runs of test 4680 battery cells. These are usually short runs of 30 or 50 battery cells. And then these battery cells are sent from the Roadrunner facility to another separate secret facility for rigorous testing purposes. Obviously switching from regular 4680 production processes to these special short engineering runs slows down the production process because I assume that the entire uh, line has to be shut down while they switch over. Thus, if Tesla was not doing these engineering runs, which obviously it's important that they do have these engineering runs to improve these battery cells, but if they weren't doing these and their goal was really just as many cells as possible, um, they would be able to increase their production capacity just by eliminating these engineering runs. So once again, that just illustrates that a pilot line facility is going to have times when they shut everything down, they test a new process and start again. So the goal is not as many battery cells as possible. The goal is to improve the battery cell lines so that when they implement these um, battery cell lines into their other factories, they have worked out and really optimized the battery cell production processes. Now, I think it's really important right now that we step back for just a minute and put all this data into perspective and not jump to conclusions. Because after all, the production that really matters is not their pilot line facility, how many gigawatt hours are being produced per year at this facility. It, it's important, but it's not the big important factor. The big important factor is how many battery cells can they produce at Giga Texas, um, Giga Berlin, and in the future, Giga Shanghai. After all, it's common for a pilot line facility to have some issues that need to be worked through. And... That's the purpose of a pilot line, to work through issues, and then they can implement those learnings into their new production lines at Gigafactory Texas, etc. Because of this, I don't believe Tesla is going to have all these same problems with what I'm going to call their Generation 2 uh, production lines. As I mentioned in that past video, Tesla's already made great progress at eliminating several key issues in building 4680 battery cells. And from what I can tell, the battery cell lines at Giga Texas should be generation two designs incorporating several improvements, including for instance, a new three in one machine that I discussed in the past video, which should not only improve efficiency of manufacturing, but I believe it'll also reduce some of the issues that I talked about in that past video. As for the escalator and jelly roll insertion machine issues that I mentioned earlier, I believe Tesla will also get those issues solved and will implement those fixes into their future battery lines as well. In addition, according to one of my sources, Tesla still has some really aggressive targets for their 4680 production at Giga Texas, but I'll talk about that in the next video in this series. In that video, I plan to not only talk about some 4680 production uh, news from Gigafactory Texas, but I also have some interesting and I believe exciting news about Tesla's dry battery electrode manufacturing processes, and especially some interesting information about the cathode side of the dry battery electrode manufacturing. So if you're not already subscribed to this channel, make sure that you subscribe. Um, and also, um, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. If you are in the battery industry or if you have any insights to share or corrections to share on the information that I talked about in this video, feel free to email me. My email address is john at cleanerwatt.com, J-O-N at cleanerwatt.com, and I'd love to hear from you. I also want to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.